Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com A very groovy website you really should visit oh, it's, it's amazing there's, there's pages on there there's, uh, there's things you can click on uh, It's really good There's even pictures There's a gallery which has got lots of pictures of Andre on there. There's, yeah, there's lots of things. All of my recordings, all of my audio recordings are on there. All organised into categories. So everything is very easy to find. And you can play and download, you can stream and download everything. That I've got on there. It's one thousand and about one thousand fifty recordings, I think, are on there since two thousand and six. What else? There's an about me page where I just I don't give a lot of information really, but just a little bit. There's a contact me page, so you can contact me by. Uh, phone, by mail, by email, by uh, filling in a form on the page, uh, by Facebook, Twitter, um, Skype, and WhatsApp. Yeah, so there's a few different ways that you can send me a message. What else is there? There's a gift me page where you can if you choose, you can send me a gift. And there's lots of different options and ways that you can uh, show your appreciation. What other ones? There's, there's a testimonial page where you can read testimonials. And there's a, a write a testimonial page where you can write a testimonial. Where you can let me know what you think of what I do. Um, I added a new one, a new page today, but I forget what it is. What new page did I add today? So the gallery's on there. I'm sure I added a new page. I can't remember. Oh well. So this, yeah, I'm continuously building it. It's all, it's all up and running, and it works, and everything's on there as far as the content. But I'm, um, you know, I'm, I'm using WordPress, and I'm going to try and make it look a bit nicer and add a few bits on there just to make it more homey, kind of. But uh, it's a, a place to contact me, but also everything I've got is on there. And of course, uh, you've got all the podcasts that um, are on Spreaker and all, well, you know, depends what podcast service you use. So I've got about 45 podcasts. Um, so that's it, yeah. So my name is Jason. Newland, this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. And what was it? please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. So I think that's everything that I need to say at the beginning of this recording I would like to say thank you to those of you that have sent me gifts recently I really appreciate it you know who you are and um, some people don't like me to mention their names so um, of course I, I'm showing uh, respect for that so um 
try and perhaps not to mention anyone's names anymore when it comes to gifts and things but uh, I do really appreciate your support and really appreciate you listening because without you listening there would be no podcasts and uh, yeah so it's uh, it's groovy that's my word of the day groovy talking about words guess what I'm going to do guess what I've got in my hand right now I've got the school dictionary again which is it's the Collins school dictionary from what year normally has a year doesn't know 2016 Wow, it's a fairly um, new addition. So, I've been building up a few little books collection. Little tiny, it's a tiny little library. I've got how many books have I got? One, two, three, four, five. I think five books, um, and I've been getting them from secondhand shops, and you know. This, for example, was two pound from the works. So the works.co.uk. It's a it's a shop where you can, you know, like it's a physical shop as well as I guess being online. And they just sell cheap stuff. They sell, they sell stuff cheaply. And you know, so that's that's you know, you know, you know. I'm going to say the word you know quite a lot. You know what? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? There was a time I used to be a big Bru- uh, Frank Bruno fan. He's a boxer, heavyweight boxer. He became the world champion in 1995, I do believe. And I was a fan of his from the. I suppose middle middle eighties, early eighties, and I went through a little phase where I used to talk like him, because when he did interviews, he used to say, "You know what I mean, Harry? You know what I mean? You know what I mean, Harry?" Like that, and like, that was how he used to laugh. You know what I mean, Harry? And I, I don't know if I want, maybe I wanted to be like him, but I just used to copy that and say, you know what I mean, you know what I mean. It must have been so annoying to, to other people. But there you go. So the point of this podcast is to be boring to talk about stuff in a boring way so that it can help your brain to slow down and As you focus on my voice, you're no longer thinking about stuff, whatever stuff you was thinking about before, that might have been getting in the way of, you know, sleeping, or relaxing in order to sleep so unlike some of my more hypnosis podcasts and recordings this is just me chatting 
that's just really all it is. Sometimes I will talk about what is going on in my life and other times I just make stuff up and then other recordings different I'll read a little bit out of a book or um, you know it's it's just just different everyone every everything is different yet similar if that makes sense so I'm trying to uh, expand my reservoir or the repertoire reservoir to include things like uh, I've got a book on chickens that I got uh, a few days ago and I did read a little bit out of that book and I'd like to do some other stuff as well Andre's just come back into the living room after spending the last half of an hour or so in the bedroom with his girlfriend who is now very very thirsty he's having a big old drink of water and I'm guessing he's going to go and have have some food as well because there is food there waiting for him to nibble on and chew and you know, all the processes involved in eating so as per usual whenever I start recording he pops out <laughs> that's why I, I was going to get a shed I, I, might, I probably mentioned this in previous recordings I was going to buy a shed on the catalogue and pay it off over a few months and have it in my bedroom and make my recordings in there. So you don't have that background. of him although I know that some people would quite like the idea that he's in the background running around and playing because he's definitely got a lot of fans and in a way it would be quite nice to have a video so I could show you what exactly he is doing right now Because I've got this, or I say I've got, he's got this big, I think it's 12 foot, he's got a 12, he's got a 12 foot um, tunnel, it's like this plastic tunnel that he climbs through and 
basically climbs through it, but not he like goes upside down and climbs through it. So he's he seems to like it. I think it scratches him as well. It kind of gives him gets him an opportunity to scratch his back. And he seems to like it in there. Sometimes he goes to sleep when he's in there. But uh, now he's drinking some water again. And he's got this thing where he dips his chin in the water. Oh, now he's going to have some dinner, so he's having some wet food, which is cat food that he has. And his bowl of dry food is very much overflowing. So that's... He generally, generally only eats the dry food when the wet food has been completed. It's, uh, it's like his, the, his second option, as it were. You know, today, I say today, but yesterday, because it's, it's now Monday, it's, uh, 12.35 in the morning on Monday the I think it is the 16th of September 2019 and yesterday was actually a really relaxing day for me. I was up quite late in the morning, or till about probably about nine o'clock in the morning is when I went to bed on Sunday morning. But I made three recordings. I did a "Let Me Boy You to Sleep." a deep sleep whisper hypnosis which I hadn't done for a week I can't believe it had been that long and I also made a sleep hypnosis weekly which was due to be made so I made three recordings I And I stayed up because, well, normally I kind of stay up anyway, but I was, um, I was listening on the radio to Tyson Fury boxing, which started at, I think it was five o'clock, which is something like nine o'clock American time, or wherever it was. Is it Las Vegas? possibly and so I listened to that and it finished about half past six or 25 minutes past six because the the DJs or the radio presenters normally start at six o'clock and they were talking about how uh, they couldn't believe that they didn't start until 25 past 6 instead of 6 o'clock and um, that's about all it is there, there was a lady and a man talking and I think the man said how are you? And she said, I'm okay considering it's 6.25. And he said, oh, 
She said, yeah. And I, I turned the radio over to something else. Because I'd watched what I wanted to watch, and that was all I needed to to watch or listen to, rather. Although what I did today, I actually watched the boxing on YouTube. Watched the whole fight, which was cool. So. I woke up, I did a bit during the day and listened to some, listened to some, uh, yeah I watched the boxing, I watched a few other bits and listened to some stuff during the day, but I spent a lot of the day asleep, but this evening I got quite a lot of work done on the website. Now Andre's rolling about in a plastic bag. I was hoping he was just going to go to sleep. But he seems to be in his uh, awake state. Which is when he starts to be naughty sometimes. Although the... What is it? The, the kitchen cupboard that he likes to open and bang. In order to get my attention so that I go in there and then he can run away from me and play which is, you know, it's, it's good fun, but I don't always want to do that because I might be make, making a recording. Now he's behind me doing a well you don't want to know what he's doing let's let's put it this way let's uh, he's decorating the newspaper on the floor yeah now he's in the chair underneath me or underneath the chair that I'm sitting on Oh, he's gone back to bed. He's gone back to bed. Yay. Good. It's kind of weird because we... Our energies clash sometimes. Because sometimes I just want to cuddle him and play and... And he, he's asleep and he just like pushes me away. Go away, Dad. I'm too tired. And then other times I'm asleep... Like earlier today, I was in bed, lying down asleep, and he came in. And first of all, he started scratching at the carpet. And I could just, look, I opened my eye a little bit so he just so I could see what he's doing. And he was just staring at me because he wanted me to get out of bed and play. So I just laid there, and he climbed onto the bed and he started. You know, just like climbing all over me and nibbling at my ear and nibbling at my eye, licking my eye eyebrow. And then he went down and that sounds weird, doesn't it? And then he walked down to my feet. Down, you know, down my leg. To my feet and I thought he's going to start biting my toes now because that's he knows that that gets my attention and he did start playing with my toes you know with his hands and 
he did put his his mouth over the toe, but he didn't bite. He just had a good. Had to be fair, I think he sniffed it and he just fell unconscious because of the smell of my feet it was so bad that it just knocked him out, and he fell asleep. So that was quite good. But then I decided to get out of bed anyway. So in this uh, dictionary, lick, verb, if you lick something, you move your tongue over it. Noun, the action of licking. So noun is an action. Oh, life assurance. I don't know what life assurance is. I like life insurances. It's a noun. Life assurance is an insurance which provides a sum of money in the event of the policyholder's demise. So, but what is life insurance then? I thought that was. So, life. That must be the same thing then. Assurance and insurance. Because I used to work in insurance. Oh, show business. What does it say here? It's a noun. Show business is entertainment in the theatre, films and television. Oh. Shovel, shovels, shoveling, shoveled. Noun, one, a tool like a spade used for moving earth or snow. Verb two, if you shovel earth or snow, you move it with a shovel. Oh. Shrink. Oh, look here. Shrinks. Shrinking. Shrank. Shrank. Shrunk. Verb. If something shrinks it becomes smaller if you shrink for something you move away from it because you are afraid of it shrinkage shrivel Shrivels, shriveling, shriveled. Verb. When something shrivels, it becomes dry and withered. Ah. Oh, serenade. Let's have a look at the serenade. Verb. One. If you serenade someone you love, you sing or play music to them outside their window. Noun to a song sung outside a woman's window by a man who loves her. It's a bit sexist, is it? Isn't it? I mean, why does it have to be outside a window? What's wrong with it being outside a door? I mean, surely if somebody is... I'm just thinking of an example of someone that I used to want to serenade. 
she worked in a coffee shop and had this this little little dream little dream that one day if I had the money I could pay for a big uh, like big trailer with a stage to be parked outside where she worked and get a backing band and start to serenade her but that wouldn't be serenading through a window it would be more through the front door of that particular premises in some ways it would be serenading her through Well, not other people's ears because that doesn't really make sense serenade her through embarrassment I think that's why if I ever proposed to somebody I would do it so that they had to say yes even if they changed their mind afterwards, just to put the pressure on. So I'd do it on a, like a television show or a sporting event, you know, have it organised so it's filmed on live television, you know. That way that she'd have to say, well, she doesn't have to, but she'd feel pressured to say yes. At least then it'd be nice to have had a yes rather than I'd like you as a friend or we can't because I'm your teacher or who are you? Why why are you why are you asking me to marry you? Or, you know or did you not see the police injunction? Leave me alone. Oh, servant, servant, noun. Someone who is employed to work in another person's house. Ah. do wonder you know when you think well you might not think but I sometimes I wonder about what kind of life or living or standard of living I would have had let's say a hundred years ago you know 1919 or 200 years ago um, and I know it would depend very much on where I was born and you know uh, the type of family I had and financially you know what their situation was but I know that my family background was working class you know going back I mean my grandmother's father worked on the roads so he was Irish and he came to England and he worked on the roads and I'm not sure what her mother did and my mother's father, I do believe, was a lorry driver. So they were all working class and... I'm guessing probably lived in council houses. Because it was, I think it was quite difficult to own your own house in the sort of 60s and stuff. I think I might be wrong 
I might have just made it up. And I do wonder what I would have done. Maybe I'd have been a servant. Maybe I'd have been a criminal. I don't know. Because those born today, you know, sort of in the last maybe 50 years, this has been, I suppose, technically one of the best times to have been born so far, as far as technology goes. Perhaps, I, I don't know. I guess that's up for opinion, isn't it? But I wasn't massively impressed with the 70s, <laughs> even though I was only a little kid. I just. I had no knowledge of politics or any of that kind of stuff. I'm fairly knowledgeable now about British politics but not so much about other countries and I think part of the reason for that is because there's just been so much going on in my country politically over the last few years that it's just got just you know it's just non-stop and prob probably the same everywhere, I guess. But when I was a little child, I was pretty much oblivious to any of that stuff. Should we have a look at the word oblivious? Oblivious. Is it oblivious or oblivious? Oblivious. Oblivious. L M N O P. B B Ob Ob A O B. Bl C. I nearly got a thesaurus the other day. And I still may do so. Because thesauruses are in some ways a bit more interesting. Although I know that this is not supposed to be interesting. But the examples of using the words within a sentence I find to be somewhat useful. So ob c b c ob b o b c. Here's a question for you, and it might it's not going to be the same everywhere, but. Why the bathroom lights? So the lights in a bathroom, you know the big string that you pull down and click to turn the light on and off. Why is it still so damn loud? So that you can hear it, someone else's light being turned on. I don't want to see, I don't want to hear another person's bathroom light being turned on. Just like I don't want other people to hear my bathroom light being turned on. Which is why I leave the bathroom light on all night. So that I don't disturb other people. But I realise I'm in the minority there. Obliter... What was it? Ob... Ob... 
Oh, I've forgotten the word. Obvious. Ob. Obtuse. What are obtuse is? It's, just, it's an adjective, whatever that is. Someone who is obtuse is stupid. <laughs> is stupid or slow to understand things. I wonder, or Nismi going, I wonder what obtuse means. Someone is stupid or slow to understand things. Or, two, for maths, an obtuse angle, or angel, not angle, is an angle between 90 and 180 degrees. Obl, 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 oblivion, oblivion, okay. Or oblivion includes oblivious. So oblivion, noun, oblivion is unconsciousness or complete lack of awareness of your surroundings oblivious adjective obliviously adverb ah. an obscure obscure let's see what it says here obscure adjective Number one, so something that is obscure is known by only a few people. And it gives uh, an example, an obscure Mongolian dialect. And number two, something obscure is difficult to see or to understand and another example the news was shrouded in obscure language and then a verb three to obscure something is uh, to make it difficult to see or understand His view was obscured by trees. So something that's obscure is known by only a few people. So I guess I'm obscure, aren't I? I'm only known by a few people. Like worldwide, really. A few thousand. Obscure. So I should call myself the obscure hypnotist or the obscure boring man. Ooh, observation. No, wait a minute. Observant. Observant. Adjective. Someone who is observant notices things that are not easy to see. I would say that I'm pretty observant sometimes. That's it, there's no jokes there, that's it, that's what I think. I see qualities in myself that no one else sees. So observation. Observation is the act of watching something carefully. So gives an example. Success hinges on close observation. And number two, something that you have seen or noticed. Number three, a remark. 
Number four, observation is the ability to notice things that are not easy to see. Yeah. So I suppose if we go to observe, verb. I like to think of myself as being about seven foot tall. I also like to think that I'm quite observative. Observe, observative, is that a word? Observe, observe, yes. Uh, an observer yeah but observative that's a word isn't it it's not in here though and it says observe verb one to observe something is to watch it carefully number two to observe something is to notice it. Three, if you observe that something is the case, you make a comment about it. And number four, to observe a law or custom is to obey or follow it. Then it says observer, noun, observable, adjective. Ah. Let's have a look what other words there are. Pocket money. Noun. Pocket money is an amount of money given regularly to children by their parents. It's very simplistic. could be money given by somebody else like an uncle or an aunt or I often give my my father pocket money I do I give him when I see him I give him 50 pence to go and buy some sweets when I was uh, when I was what was it seven and started to visit my I think it was my granddad's mother and she was auntie Nanny Waker that's what we called her Nanny Waker and she was in bed. She was very, very, very elderly. And she, I think she was in bed most of the time. But she was, she loved seeing us. And she'd give us money to go to the shops and buy some sweets. Or um, buy a, like a comic or a book or something. And I really enjoyed getting that money I really you know I look forward to seeing her because that money was just really nice just to go to the shop and buy stuff and 
Yeah, I like that. I think it was a novelty to me because I hadn't had that before. So, you know, up to the age of seven, I hadn't had anybody give me money to go to the shops um, for me to go and get something for myself. Uh, so it was kind of special. Spe special little memory of mine. Let's have a look what it says under the word nanny. N A N N N N N N N N N N N L M N Let's have a look see what it says here. Nag. Nags. Nagging. Nagged. Verb. One. If you nag someone, you keep complaining to them about something. Two. If something nags at you, it keeps worrying you. So, a nag. What about a horse? Isn't a horse a nag? Oh, it's got navel. Navel. Noun. The small hollow on the front of your body just below your waist. I'm not sure if I've got a navel anymore. I haven't seen it for a long time. I wonder if I do. So Nan, N-A, Nanny. Okay, it's got Nanny here. Nanny's noun, a woman whose job is looking after young children. Hmm. So this is only three years old, this book, this dictionary, and it's for schools. So they're not... Surely anyone, men and women, could be nannies now, can't they? There's a job. I would imagine. Nativity, noun. In Christianity, the nativity is the birth of Christ or the festival celebrating this. Neighbour. Noun. Your neighbour is someone who lives next door to you or near you. Your neighbour is also someone standing or sitting next to you. Now I've never heard that before. And it's given an example. I got chatting with my neighbour in the studio. Never have I ever heard or said that ever. No, never. I was waiting in the dentist's waiting room and I got chatting to my neighbour. No. Unless they're your neighbour that lives next door. I 
I was at the bus stop talking to my neighbour. And it sounds like your neighbour's following you around. Uh. Nephew Noun Someone's nephew is the son of their sister or brother Ooh Nervous system. Noun. Your nervous system is the nerves in your body together with your brain and spinal cord. says release verb one to release someone or something means to set them free or remove restraints from them two to release something also means to issue it or makes it available for example he is releasing an album of love songs how did they know I do like the idea of releasing an album of love songs and just it kind of needs to be done in a recording studio with someone that can provide the background music as well as patience <laughs> for me to sing but I'd, I'd also like to release a Christmas album there's a couple of things I'd like to do it's one of those um it just be a buzz for me it just be exciting however strange that may seem but it just for me it'd be like wow what a great thing I've just made a I've got an album you know I think with the right recording and the you know the decent background music I could put together quite a nice little album of songs but that's something that I want to do one day and I can make it available for people to buy yeah <laughs> I might sell about five of them I reckon yeah some people might like it I can I can sing-ish. My voice is not as high as it used to be. Although, you know, the other day I was in town and there was this man playing a guitar busking and he looked I would say he was in his 60s. But his voice was lovely. And there's no reason for his voice not to be lovely because he's in his 60s. But the voice does seem to change with time. 
you know, to someone that can sing really high notes when they're 20, perhaps can't quite reach those notes when they hit 40, perhaps. I used to be able to do all the high notes, just like Michael Jackson. Not so much now. But that's okay. Relish. Oh, oh, that's a weird noise I made there. Oh, relish. Verb. One. If you relish something, you enjoy it. Hmm. He relishes the idea of getting some cash. Noun. Number two. Relish is enjoyment. He told me with relish of the wonderful times he had. Whatever. And number three. Relish is also a savoury sauce or pickle. And now we'll end with the word relax. So it's verb one. If you relax, you become calm and your muscles lose their tension. Two, if you relax your hold, you hold something less tightly. And number three, to relax something also means to make it less strict or controlled. The rules governing student contact or conduct were relaxed. Relaxation noun. Oh. So I hope that listening to me going through some of the words of the Collins School Dictionary was somewhat relaxing. And I'm going to go now and I will speak to you again very soon. And please remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye.